Karen has served as a college recruiter for 13 years, three years in the private college sector, and 10 years as director of recruitment of U at UNL in our college. She created a mentoring program for the UNL athletic department known as Athlete to Athlete, a transitional mentoring program that will start this fall. She teaches a 300-level multicultural education course for per-service teachers for nine semesters at Nebraska. Karen has a master's degree in curriculum and instruction with an emphasis in educational psychology and is currently one of our ed ad doctoral students candidates pursuing a PhD with an emphasis in leadership. So welcome Karen. Thank you, thank you. Well, oh my goodness, as I was watching all these wonderful presentations, I noticed that all of us have the same experiences. It is so awesome to see that I wasn't alone, because this next slide is going to make you think I was alone. That's how I felt when I started my dissertation. I felt like, oh my goodness, are you kidding me? Am I the only black kid in the classroom? Am I the only person that, you know, is scared or doesn't even understand, like, how to even write a dissertation, let alone do research? That's exactly how I felt, and it was so nice, like, oh my goodness, there. There were other people that were going through the same thing. So, how did I conceptualize my topic? So, the same, courses I took that helped me develop my topic were some of these courses that I took. In my first research class, I did a study um, about student leadership, because I love students and I love leadership. So, I did a study with five other students and we did a phenomenology. And I can remember being in that course, I was like, what? And I would think I was the only one that said this, but everybody kind of agreed. You know, agree. I said, what's a phenomenology? And the kids looked at me like, hee hee hee, like she don't know. I was like, yeah, y'all don't know either, okay? <laughs> so don't try to play me. So I didn't know. So it was really good to take that first course. I did a we did a study on uh, new student enrollment. And uh, there were five of us. We, did, we conducted interviews. We didn't have to get IRB approval. Um, but one of the students, she wanted to use it actually for her master thesis. So hooray, smart girl. Who was that who just got up here? He said, know your topic early. So that was fantastic. So I did that in my intro class. So after doing that study, I was like, I don't like phenomenology. It's mm -mm, kind of boring. So I moved on to narrowing my topic. So I would suggest in your research classes, as you take them, just like everyone said, Start doing studies that you think you might want to do, because that's going to help you narrow your topic. I evaluate um, articles. Read, 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 read. Like, eat those articles up, all right? And I'll give you a tool to help you keep track of those as well. Look at studies that you can duplicate. Look at what other researchers have done and said, oh, we should have done more of that. Do that, because that might be a study that you can do. Add on to someone else's research. In my advanced qualitative research class, I, that's when I figured out, Dr. Cresswell, you're the man. I decided I wanted to do a qualitative study on diversity and recruitment. I wanted to look at um, institutions where they had students of color who kind of uh, were chosen, like, hey, you're brown, you're brown, oh, you're brown. You know, like you get a car on Oprah, you should do <laughs> recruitment. So I wanted to look at those students because I was that person. I was that person that was at an institution, predominantly white institutions, where I was the person in charge of recruiting for diversity. So I wanted to do a study and see, I knew how I felt, right? I knew how I felt, but I wanted to know how the students feel when they are charged to recruit for diversity. So that's how I knew my talk. This is a sample of uh, Eva Bachman. Who knows Dr. Bachman? Anybody know Dr. Bachman? Yeah, she, you all should know her. If you're in graduate school at UNL in Nebraska, you all should get to know Dr. Bachman. She um, created this article summary form that we all used. She gave it to us and said, she didn't, this is a little change, but she gave it to us and said, hey, um, use this to keep track of your articles. Um, and you know, I was back in the day, so use this to keep track of your articles so that you can go back to it, you have your citation already done, you have uh, a summary of each article that you've read, she created this, and she said, now tweak it how you want and share it with whoever you want. How many of you in this class I've given it to so far? Thank you, ma'am. Oh, uh, two, yeah. yeah. It. Uh, but you're going to want it, right? Oh, no, I have it. You uh, have Susie it? Carter, you Susie, yeah, Susie, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So it was a group of us that took that and even gave it to us, and we, like, just changed it. So it's a great resource. Resources. 
resources, I talked about, um, everybody talked about resources, about, you know, talking to your instructors, talking to your chair, talking to your community. I have a mantra. I have this mantra. <clears throat> and it's called respect the process. And it's, you're going to hear that throughout this. Respect the process. Because graduate <laughs> school is a process. It's like we get in it, I, you know, I was like, dang, I feel like I'm pledging my sorority all over again. It is a process, but you have to respect that process because there's a going to be a great result in the end. At first, you feel lost, confused. Um, you feel like you're not smart enough, not good enough. You're like, you feel like you can't do this, but you don't realize this team you have behind you. You don't realize that it's going to get better. It's a process. Respect the process. Okay? So I talk about, you know, um, attending workshops. I went to writing workshops. I uh, read the Narrative Inquiry by Condit and Conley. That was my Bible because I did a narrative, qualitative narrative study. Talked about um, um, reading other dissertations, which everybody else talked about. Um, attending, I had a writing group. I started a writing group. We met every Monday and Wednesday nights. Um, there was about, oh my goodness, it varies. Some nights there'll be six of us, some nights there'll be three, some nights there'll be ten, people bring a friend. Writing groups are great if you're really right. Mm -hmm. They're only good if you're really right. So if you're going to meet, you know, plan it. Talk, you know, have your little <coughs> chat at the beginning. Get it out, get your throw up session out. That's what we called it because we get in our writing groups and we'd be like, ah, da, 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 da. our advisor this or, you know, work day this. And then it's like, okay, we need to write. So then you'd write for maybe half an hour, and then you'd talk a little bit more, and you'd be able to share with each other what you're doing. Um, sometimes um, somebody might be working on something, and they say, can I read this out loud to you, just really quick? We, they would read it out loud, and we would, we would pro help them process through it so that they could keep going. So writing groups really were good for me. I also went to boot camp, UNL office of boot camp. So I went to the writing boot camp. That was great. I also follow Wendy Carter, PhD, on Twitter. She's phenomenal. She gives you little pushes and tips about, you know, staying on track to get the PhD. Very encouraging. She talks about writing every day. Um, I use the elements of writing style because I'm not a good writer. So yes, I read <coughs> Yeah, Dr. Yeah. Dr. Grady recommended that. And yes. so I read that book like, Lord Jesus, help me not speak how I, let me not write how I speak. So I did, <laughs> I used that book a lot. It was a great book. And then, of course, I use uh, Cresswell's research design. Okay? So, here are the books. They're on my table. Oh, yeah. All right, so I had the big battle when I was starting. I was just like, oh my goodness, you know, you get in the groups, you're with your peers, they're all in grad school, and they're all saying, well, you know, quantitative is more respected than qualitative. And that mixed method, that's just something new. Don't nobody even know what that is. So, you, you're like getting pulled. You're like, well, should I do quantitative? Should I do qualitative? What is mixed methods, right? Because I was coming in during the time where we were trying to figure out, what is mixed methods? Man, it, sound, it sounded really interesting to me. So you go through this battle of which one should you do? And I was kind of like you. I was like, I'm a talker. I can talk to the cows come home. And I was like, I'm really good at telling stories, too. So maybe that's a better fit for me. I'm not scared of numbers, but I don't like numbers, okay? I'll put it like that. But I also thought the mixed method uh, style was really interesting. But the time when I came in was so new that I was just like, you know, I'm not battling that. I want to get done. I don't want to be here for 100 years. I'm already here for, right? So I chose to do qualitative. And then with hand coding and Max QDA, we'll get into that. How many of you know about Max QDA? Yes. Right on, do you like it? Yes, great. All right, so like I said, I decided. I conducted 20 interviews, um, and I <clears throat> paid to have my transcriptions done. Where's my guy, he left. Uh, yeah, there you go. I paid to have mine done. Yes, thank God, because I um, actually did my own um, for one study so that I could get that feeling. <coughs> but I worked full time, I was like, are you kidding me? 20 interviews? No, somebody else is gonna do it. But I listened to the audio tapes. Um, Dr. Grady worked with me with my 20 uh, participants. She had me put all of their um, transcripts on different colored paper so that when we got together, she had me and another uh, doctoral candidate, who actually I think now is a doctor, uh, get together. And we, she taught us how to hand code, because I didn't know how to do that. 
So it was great. She spent an evening with us and we worked on that. It was great. So, um, and that was funny too. That, that's what we get on. So there, my old school tapes. So I did, I was so paranoid. I did the old school tapes, right? 20 people. I did the new school too. And I also did video. Because I was all nervous. Like, I didn't know. I was like, okay, I'm doing the tapes. I'm an audio tape with the recorder. And then I'm going to videotape you as you're talking. So that since I'm going to tell a story, I'll be able to look at your gestures and your how you spoke and what you did to be able to write my story really good. Crazy, overdone, but I'm glad I did it. And my Bible. So here is my piñata. I know, right? <laughs> so this is my hand coding, right? So I, one of the ladies who was in my um, writing group, Ter uh, Teresa uh, McKenna, she would come to our session, writing group session, and be like, girl, what is that hot mess? And I'm like, shut up, this is my hand coding. You know, Greg, tell me how to do this. Are you kidding me? What are you talking trash? She was like, girl, have you not heard of Max QDA? I was like, yes, we, that, those people came and spoke in Dr. Cresswell's class, and yeah, it sounded really interesting, but I'm, I'm, I'm doing it this way. Dr. Grady, I'm doing it this way. Are you kidding me? Dr. Grady said do it this way, right? <laughs> so, my hand coded it down. So, like I said, Teresa, so she started calling my data my pinata. She was like, oh, that's Karen's pinata. So every time I would come, she was like, so how's your pinata doing? How are you and your pinata? I'm like, shut up, my pinata's working. Don't worry, <laughs> right? So then I started thinking about it. I was like, you know, I probably should try this new technology, Max QDA. So I stopped coding this way, and I went to Max QDA. All right? So I was struggling. It was really hard, because you have to learn the software, correct, to, in order to do Max QDA. So I would not advise anyone to try to learn the software as you are coding. Learn the software first and then do it because that just took more time. So I, I learned uh, Max QDA. I started coding with Max QDA. And then I was like, no, I got frustrated and mad. I was like, I'm going back to the Brady way. Are you kidding me? This works, right? Now, in the end, we got married. We made it. We put them together. So what I did was I did Max QDA and hand coding. After I did all of my hand coding, I coded again in Max QDA. So for the people that don't know what Max QDA, it is awesome. And it is much better than when I started with it. So they changed some things. So now, uh, and Max QDA is a data management system. Um, and you can put in all of your, your um, people, your participants. You can put in websites, you can put in literature, you can put in video, and you can manage all of your data through Max QDA. Became my friend in the end. Here you color code, so like I was color coded on those pieces of paper, cutting those little pieces of paper out, you color code here. So you just name it, and you drop anything and everything someone says, maybe about careers or retirement, you drop that into that color code, okay? So you'll have a, a, a heading that might say retirement. Anytime someone would have mentioned retirement, you highlight it, you can highlight it right here, and you can drop it into that topic. It is slickety slick. It's almost doing some mixed methods with numbers because you can find out how many times they said it, you know, who, who said what about it, what did they say, you can run reports with it. It's an exceptional tool. And this just shows you, again, that it's management. Some um, tips. Respect the process. I've got to say it over and over because to myself, I have to tell myself. Take advantage of, of uh, resources. Be a good listener. Listen to what your people are saying around you. Listen to what your advisor says. Really listen to your advisor says. Believe and follow deadlines. Communicate, communicate, communicate. Set a writing, writing schedule and stick to it. I used to get up every morning at 5.30 and be like, okay, I'm gonna write for the first hour before I go to work, because I'm a morning person. Don't talk to me after 3.30. I'm not in, I'm not, food, <laughs> not a good afternoon person, but I'm a morning person because I talk for years. And at 3.15, 3.30, done, it's done. So I'm really good in the morning. And then I will write at night after work. So get a schedule and stick to it. Celebrate your accomplishments. So when I turned my dissertation in, it's been two months now I turned it in, 
I bought myself a cute little watch. So celebrate. <laughs> we celebrate. All right? Um, ask questions and um, for help. <coughs> Don't be ashamed, don't be fearful. I think I, you know, I've been with like a lot of people going through this process and I've seen the fear because I've been right with them and we talk about the fear. We talk about the shame of feeling like we don't know what we're doing or we don't understand something. But ask questions, don't be ashamed, don't be fearful. Um, look at feedback for the betterment of you and your work. Feedback is good. Uh, my group, my writing group, they used to laugh at me. I'm like, I can't wait to see the red pin marks. You know, they'd be like, no, you. I'm like, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that because this, that person that is giving me feedback is trying to do it for the betterment of me. Not to put me down, not to make me feel stupid. They're doing it for the betterment of me. So take advantage of that. Um, Present at conferences, which everyone has talked about. Those are really fun. I presented at almost every WELP conference there was. I got excellent feedback every time. Somebody had something else to tell me. This last time I presented, it was awesome because they were like really interested. They were like, oh, tell us about that first city recruitment. Yeah, uh-huh, yeah. Because we know that's a national thing right now, right? Diversity, <laughs> most definitely. Um, another tip is, Write without corrections. I had to learn that along the way. Is that I would write and always want to read it over and then change it. Just write. You're going to get a lot of time to edit and correct. Just write. And I, it took me too long to figure that out. Uh, I was going to say, like I said, know that your advisory and committee has your best interest at heart. Um, they do. Respect the process. It's a process. Love your topic. Love your topic. I'll say it three times so you'll know it. Love your topic. Thank you. Do you have any questions? Questions for Karen? Yes? Can you tell us more about Max? QDA. Yes, Max QDA. What do you want to know about it? Uh, how do I get it? I'm All right, so virgin. students, <laughs> yes, man, I know, I feel you. Students, you can get it for $99, and you get all the updates for free. So, and they update all the time, and you get them for free. I just wanted to add to that, too. Yeah. You can check it out for free for 90 days with your UNL ID. Write down in Henslick Hall in the technology area right at the office for 90 days for free. And I didn't do that because guess what? I wanted to be on my own timeline yeah. and I didn't want to have to go back and get it three months later. Right. So for me, it was worth the investment. I still have it. I still have all my data. It's, so, but yes, thank you so much, Lindsay. That is very true. Because I was going to do that. And I was like, eh, I'm a little lazy. So you just find it online. <laughs> so yeah, and you can you have to send them a copy of your student ID. It, oh, it's kind of scary because I was like, really? You need my NUID? No, thank you. But you have to send them your ID and just prove that you're a student, and then you'll get it. Mm -hmm. And they have it for Macs, and they have it for, P for PCs. Yes? Can you go over Dr. Brockman's citation form again? Oh, yeah. What was that? Oh, I can send it to you. Oh, if great. you know, if anybody wants the uh, article thing, just either email me at kcastabon2 at unl.edu, and I will email it to you. Thank you. You're very welcome. All right. Well, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you. Thank you.